What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the Emotiva TA1 integrated amplifier. And I gotta be honest, Emotiva, it excites me. I love the brand as a whole. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story on why before we jump into this review. So, I used to be into hi-fi when I was a kid, you know, think anywhere from 12 to about 20 years old. I didn't have a lot of money, so most of my gear was cheap junk. It didn't sound all that great, but I didn't know any better. It put a smile on my face and I had a great time with that super affordable, hodgepodge of used parts that I bought at the Salvation Army and found at garage sales. Fast forward to about 28 years old, I had totally fallen off with audio. Life had gotten crazy, hectic, you know, jobs, girlfriends, and so on, right? I hadn't had a decent sound system in probably about a decade, and I was feeling disconnected from life in general. I guess you could say I was going through it, and I remembered, hey, you know, listening to music on a great sound system, you know, great for me at least back then, really put a smile on my face. So I started Googling like, what's, what's a good amp? What are good speakers, right? And I came across Steve Gutenberg's review on CNET about this company, Emotiva. They had just released a $229 amplifier called the A100. This was back in 2012. His review was glowing. I ordered it right away. I saw they had a pair of inexpensive speakers on their website too. I ordered those. I ordered a cheap Bluetooth adapter off of eBay. I think it was a mono price when it was like $19. I was all in under 400 bucks and I played music on that system from my iPhone 5, I believe, Bluetooth to the mono price Bluetooth adapter and then RCA into the Emotiva A100. Oh no, it was called the, it was called the Mini X was the Emotiva Mini X amplifier. It didn't even have a remote control. It was so small. I still have it actually. I might make a video one day about that system because I still have it. Um, anyhow, I digress. I got back into audio because I saw this affordable brand. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of money in 2012 and you know, even spending 400 bucks on all of that, it was like kind of a lot, but I was able to do it. I was able to put a little bit of money aside here and there and make it happen. And I set it all up and I was blown away by like the clarity, the openness, the sense of scale. Cause before that, most of my sound systems were cheap or inexpensive AVRs. Think something like 150 to $250, like a cheap AVR you'd buy at a big box retailer. You know, most of those, they're hardly good at home theater. They're definitely not good for a dedicated music system. You know, and I would be using like speakers that I found at garage sales typically. So this Emotiva setup was a huge upgrade for me. And every time I review an Emotiva component, I like to think that someone else that's getting into this hobby for the first time might have a similar experience where they spend what is, you know, maybe a good amount of money to them, but we all know like 550 bucks is not a whole hell of a lot for an amp in this audiophile world. And they hear just, real good sound for the first time. I just, I know it's gonna put a smile on their face. So let's jump into this review. I'll throw the main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. Sorry for the long story, guys. I felt like telling the story. It was near and dear to my heart. Anyhow, um, I'll, I will tell you about the specs and standout features. The main ones are on screen. Um, I'll tell you what this thing sounds like. Uh, we'll do some comparisons. I'll talk about speaker pairing real quick. I'll give you some just real quick quotes I got from some other reviewers so you can just hear what other people thought about it and then we'll wrap it up. So. Uh, let's start with standout features. Built-in bass management, pretty cool. You could high pass to your main speakers at 90 hertz and then low pass to your subwoofer at 90 hertz. Also at 12 dB, there's just a switch on the back that makes that happen. You can enable it or disable it if you want to, super easy. It's got pre-outs if you wanna add a larger, more powerful amplifier to it, but I found the 60 watts per channel at eight ohms to be plenty of power for my needs. Um, what else do we have? We have a nice remote control that is upgraded compared to the outgoing model. The outgoing model TA100 had a really small remote that a lot of people hated, so it's really cool to see Emotiva listen to that customer feedback maybe and gave us something that was a little bit more sleek and nice to look at. So, um, oh, one other thing is the screen is so much brighter than the outgoing model. It's totally dimmable, so you can you know have it be super dim if that's what you like or if like me, your room gets a ton of natural light and you need that brightness so you can read the display from across the room, this bad boy, super clear. There's a nice little LED that goes across like the top half of the volume knob. I think that looks really nice too. So, um, Let's get into the sound. We got a top end presentation that's just a little bit on the forward side of neutral. Its presentation is gonna be on the sharp side, so the leading edges of the notes are gonna be super clear. You're gonna feel like there's a good amount of air, detail, sparkle, 
energy, information, and so on. I feel like that's intelligent voicing because anyone getting into an amplifier in and around this price range is most likely coming from something that is just super entry level. And this is gonna feel like a huge upgrade in the department of clarity in that top end, detail retrieval, air and separation and imaging. Um, next, let's talk about the mid range. So Emotiva's mid range has always been voiced a little bit lean, cool, or analytical. I like that quite a bit. That happens to be the kind of voicing I prefer in the mid range. Reason being is it lends itself to better clarity. And that's especially important in and around this price range because mid range is a region that can get mucked up real easily on affordable amplifiers. You know, they, these companies only have so many dollars to spend on components and parts and things like that because they're planning to sell it at a really low price. So if they can't get the mid range right, the whole thing's gonna sound like crap versus like say an amplifier that's like $5,000. They've got way more money to throw out parts. They can make that mid range sound warm, juicy, luscious and open and clear at the same time. But in the affordable category, you gotta pick one or the other. It's either gonna be warm and a little muffled sounding or a little bit lean and cool, yet very open and clear sounding. So I like that Emotiva voice of the mid range a little bit on the cool side. Um, Next, let's talk about the bass. There's no mid bass bump. It's a fairly neutral affair, but the bass is what I would consider just a little bit thicker with a good amount of grip, texture, and control. Um, I had no complaints about the sound of this amp from top to bottom, and I don't have any complaints for this amplifier at all for this price point. I just don't. I thought it sounded fantastic. Um, let's talk about speaker pairing real quick. So. With the top end being a little bit sharper with this presentation, I think an easy recommendation for this amp as far as speakers go are gonna be speakers like the Polk Reserve. I love those speakers so much. It's one of my favorite speakers to recommend in and around the six to $700 price category. They sounded fantastic with this amplifier. Um, also the more affordable Elax will probably sound pretty good and just anything that's not super sharp sounding. Now, this could come down to personal taste because when I watched Andrew Robinson's review, he was like, yeah, I wouldn't pair it with like Bowers and Wilkins, for example. But then you watch Steve Gutenberg's review of this amp and he's like, I paired it with Bowers and Wilkins. It sounded incredible. So personal taste is a big factor here. Some guys like their sound super sharp. Thomas and Stereo is one of those people. He's a reviewer. I'm sure you guys know who he is. He talks about that all the time. He feels like his top end should have some spice to it, some sharpness, because real instruments in the real world can be sharp at times. Anyhow, um, speaker pairings, I think, are going to be pretty easy for the most part, because it's got honest power. It can drive most speakers. I wouldn't spend more than $1,000 on speakers. I think $1,000 and down is going to be your best value um, when picking speakers for this amp. And yeah, really my easiest recommendation is the Polk R100, Polk R200, or Dynaudio Emit 10. If you've got the budget for that, that one's $800. And that actually was a really good pairing. Um, let's talk about the internal DAC. The internal DAC was pretty good, but I got a little bit curious and wondered, you know, how much of an upgrade would it be if I added my Denifrips Aries 2 into the chain? That's an $800 DAC. It's more expensive than this whole integrated amplifier. And it's, it's always been a huge upgrade in my main reference system, but my main reference system is really expensive. There was a part of me that was like, maybe it won't be a huge upgrade on something so affordable. Boy, was I wrong. Putting the Denifrips Aries 2 in the chain really, and I mean really, kicked things up a notch. A notch. I can totally understand now why uh, Cheap Audio Man loves the Aries 2 so much. I'm pretty sure he uses Emotiva amps normally, uh, and, and a lot of his uh, uh, viewers do, and I know a lot of them bought the Aries 2 after his video, and I really get it now. I mean, I've always loved the Aries 2. It's my personal DAC. It's the one I use day to day but it was a phenomenal difference with the Emotiva TA100. Um, so I definitely recommend that pairing if you've got the budget for that. It, I'd say it turned this from like something that sounded like $550 to something that sounded closer to like a thousand, 1200, 1500 bucks even, uh, especially when paired with the Dynaudio Emit 10s. So, um, and, you know, just, just to be clear, the internal DAC, just fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, just to be clear. Uh, it sounded great, and I used that for most of my listening imp impressions. Um, let's talk about what some other reviewers thought about real quick. I'll do some short comparisons, and then we'll wrap it up. So, Andrew Robinson said the built-in phono preamp is really, really good, especially at this price point. I don't know anything about phono, guys, so take it from Andrew Robinson. He said the phono is good. It's got to be good. He listens to a lot of vinyl. Next, Andrew Robinson said, pair it with more laid back or neutral speakers, and I think the TA1 is a solid foundation to build on. 
I agree with Andrew Robinson. I think it's a solid foundation uh, to start a really awesome uh, sound system on. Steve Gutenberg, he said the display is very legible from across the room. I agree, Steve. Um, Steve Gutenberg also, like Andrew said, the phono input actually sounds pretty nice. I purposely made sure to get this quote the minute I heard another reviewer say it. Now we've got two reviewers, both saying the phono input is really good, so we know it's good, right, for those of, those of you guys that care. Lastly, when comparing it to the Denon uh, PMA600NE, Steve Gutenberg said it just smoked the Denon. Let's do this quick comparison real quick. I totally agree with Steve. I've had the Denon PMA600NE. It used to be $400, it's now $500. This bad boy's $549, so they're super close in price. The Denon PMA600NE is a good amp, don't get me wrong, but by direct comparison, it's gonna sound congested, it's gonna sound like it's lacking dynamics, it's gonna sound like it's very rolled off in the top end, its mid-range is gonna sound like there's a bit of a blanket over it. The Emotiva TA1 easily beats the Denon uh, PMA600NE, it's not even a contest. Lastly, I got some quotes from another YouTuber. His name's Matt Koikendal. He said, this could be a great all-in-one unit for someone looking to get started without worrying about all the extra separates that often plague a hi-fi setup. I totally agree. I can't imagine how intimidating it must be for some guys getting into audio and someone on the forum tells me, like, you gotta go with separates, and they're like, what are separates? And they're like, we well, get a preamp, then you get a power amp, and then you get an external DAC, and then you get an external phono amp, and it's just like, what do you mean? And you need like all these separate boxes, and it's like, it can get really hectic. So having these really nice all-in-one integrated amps at a low price with a ton of features, huge, huge help to the budding audiophile or anyone on a budget looking for good, open, clear sound. Lastly, Matt said, I suggest you take a strong look at this one as we won't see value like this often. I agree with that, I really do. I think the value here is fantastic. As far as comparisons go, outside of that Denon one I just did, I don't have any more for you guys really. The truth is in this price category, there's not much that has as many features that Emotiva brings to the table and the sound quality together, right? Like sure, there are those like cheaper $200 Class D amps. I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, they don't sound as good, they just don't. I know a lot of you wanna believe like this like ultra, ultra, like super cheap stuff can sound like super, super good, and it does. Some of these $200 integrated amps, like, like the Aurelic, it sounds so good for the money, but the Emotiva TA1 knocks that thing out of the park, and it should. It's, you know, $550. So, where does that leave us? It's pretty straightforward. This bad boy is worth every penny. Oh, it also has built-in Bluetooth, by the way, if I didn't mention that. This bad boy is worth every penny. If you're getting into audio or you've been into audio for a while and you've had the same $200 AVR for 15, 20 years and you're getting a little bit of an itch for an upgrade, you want a little bit more clarity, grab the Emotiva TA1. Or if you like the feature set I mentioned and you have your own power amp, you could save $150 and get the Emotiva PT1. That's gonna be the preamp version of this. All the same features, just without the built-in amplifier section. So, thank you for tuning in, guys. I don't have much else, to, much else to say. Besides, this channel does have a free Discord. Feel free to join if you're not too dramatic or sensitive. Um, if you have any questions, ask about them in the comments below. But if you want to have like a long-winded back and forth, you're going to have to join the Discord probably because it's kind of a pain in the butt to go back and forth on YouTube a lot and the Discord is free. Anyhow, I digress. Until next time, later.